Hey everyone, 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to bring you my SpongeBob review for House Sitting for Sandy and Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom. Alright, so of course, I'm going to start with the first pairing, the second pairing. Alright, so let's start off with House Sitting for Sandy. Alright, so House Sitting for Sandy, um, well, when you, first of all, when you hear the title, it kind of sounds similar to Wormy, back when SpongeBob and Patrick have to uh, house it for Sandy. Well, not really house it, more like pets it. Well, if you think about it, it's not really that same. It may seem the same, but it's actually kind of different. Just this time, it's just SpongeBob house it for Sandy. Patrick comes in later on, somewhere in the second half of the episode. But, yeah, so... Sandy goes out somewhere, and she just has a sponge of the house it, just check um, her, just check her plants and all that stuff, you know? And Sandy even has these robots, so I thought that was uh, cool as well. The episode, I really, I really enjoyed the episode, but it's not my favorite episode, though. I've seen a, a sponge of episodes that are a little better than this episode. A little or a lot, as you could say. It is, but I did like it, though. I think the episode overall, it's funny. And the storyline is very good. And uh, I just really enjoyed this episode. Like I said, again, not my favorite, but I did really enjoy it. It's an episode I could rewatch over and over again. And I think out of the times I rewatched the episode, I say maybe some, maybe at least, um, at least four times. Overall, I've seen the episode. So, yeah. Maybe the problems I had with the episode is that Patrick was a little annoying, uh, was a little annoying in this episode. Like, when Spongebob told Patrick, don't touch that, Patrick would uh, touch it. He wanted to say Spongebob and all that. Don't get me wrong, he was funny, but he kind of annoyed me in this episode, though, Patrick. So, yeah. And the other thing I didn't really like in the episode... And the episode was how, how was how the ending went. Like all this time, Sandy, she just all this time she was just out because she knew SpongeBob would destroy her stuff so she could test out this ray called the I forgot what it's called, but it just fixes things up. And I found that kind of dumb because if Sandy wanted instead of Sandy just leaving SpongeBob where she knows he and Patrick will destroy everything. Why doesn't she just ask Spongebob if he could destroy her stuff so she could fix it? Or she could just uh, destroy the stuff herself to test out, you know? So I just found that kind of dumb and in a way it kind of makes this episode pointless. And to top it all off, Sandy even blames Spongebob for her own mistakes at the end. Alright, the very end of the episode, it was not Spongebob's fault, Sandy. It was your fault. And Sandy's one of my favorite characters here. Uh, is one of my favorite characters in Spongebob, but... I just didn't really like how she was in the end, you know? And that was no reason for her to blame Spongebob for her own mistakes. So, Sandy, it was your fault. Not Spongebob's, alright? So, overall, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give House Sitting for Sandy 9 out of 10. Okay, you guys, now we're moving on to my review for Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom. Alright, first of all, I could say this episode, I enjoyed it much more than How Sitting for Sandy. I thought the storyline was excellent. Really, really loved it. I thought it was hilarious. All the way through, it had me cracking up. Even rewatching the episode, it still makes me crack up. And I think I've seen this episode at least a total of six times. Six times of it, I, I've at least rewatched the episode. And it still cracks me up. It's just one of my favorites from season eight. That's all I could say. So the episode about when Squidward wants to go see a Kelpie G jazz concert. And you all remember Kelpie G's first appearance 
back in that season four episode, The Thing, which he, which yeah, he makes a cameo appearance. So this is his second appearance set with just a bigger role. So yeah, he wants to go, but uh, with uh, Patrick um, accidentally eating the tickets or something like that, uh, Squidward he has no ticket. So then when SpongeBob was calling SpongeBob, he was the winner of getting two tickets for the Kelpie Jazz Con uh, Jazz concert. So then who does SpongeBob decide to take? He wants to take Squidward. Now Squidward should have been. Uh, uh, thankful for that, you know? If it weren't for Spongebob, Square wouldn't even go to that concert, so... Square didn't really say thank you to Spongebob. He could have at least done that, you know? But, yeah. And then... Squidward and Spongebob, while at the concert, they just run into a lot of problems. Uh, here and there. Patrick randomly shows up at the concert, which was hilarious, and... Everything, it just worked out for me. I lo I loved all the jokes here. There wasn't one joke I thought fell flat. All the jokes were a hit for me. I loved the storyline. I thought Squidward was funny, even though he could have at least at least said thank you to SpongeBob. Uh, Patrick was hilarious here. Um, and then what's it called? Uh, yeah, SpongeBob himself was funny, and everything in this episode was just perfect. No problem. What I really, another thing I really loved about this episode was the very ending when Spongebob was performing his ukulele with uh, Kelpie G because Kelpie G wanted Spongebob to perform with him at the jazz concert. So Spongebob was Kelpie G's guest star at the concert and I really loved the very ending, you know? I thought it was very catchy the way Spongebob was playing his ukulele and I thought, and I thought it was cool how he was just playing it, you know? Uh, it sounds better on TV, but it just goes like. Well, there's more to that, but it sounds better. Just watch the episode, but I just think it's very catchy. And even though it premiered on Nickelodeon like in September 30th, 2011, and even though today is August 1st, 2012. Uh, it's still catchy to me. It is still super catchy. And it's one of the catchiest music that, uh, uh to ever be in Spongebob. So, I really love it. I just love everything about this episode. I love the, I love the whole entire storyline. I love the jokes. The characters were hilarious. Everything worked. And the very ending with Spongebob playing his ukulele and Kelpie Chief playing his, you know, his clarinet. It was just amazing. So to top it all off, I give Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom a 10 out of 10. And if you guys like what you've seen here, please press the subscribe button up there. Yeah, see? Oh, I'm still testing out this thing. Yeah, you know where it is. Just press the subscribe button if you like what you see here. Please also like this video, comment on this video, share this video. And if you guys seen the episodes of How Sin for Sandy and Smooth Jazz of Bikini Bottom, please tell me what you think. Alright, I'm 22 Tiger Dude, and I'm signing out.